Okay. Hi, good morning um, to everybody in the UK and good afternoon to those who are dialing in from uh, the Middle East. Um, my name is Adil Khan. I am based at the British Embassy in Dubai and I work for DIT. Are uh, you able to hear me? I'm really sorry. I've been having serious problems with it's my perfect, internet Adil. connection this morning. We can hear you perfectly. Um, and I've just about managed to get on, but I can't put on my camera, so please uh, uh, bear with me. Um, yes, can hear you. Do you need thank you me very me much to you? HFA to um, having invited me to uh, speak at their annual webinar. I attended their event in 2019 um, and um, you know really happy that I, I could be part of this event. So as I said I work with DIT. Uh, I don't know how many of you all know about DIT but I'll quickly take you all through. So DIT is a part of the British government, uh, Department for International Trade, <clears throat> and I'm part of the Middle East and Afghanistan, Pakistan region, uh, which is one of the nine regions um, uh, of DIT. The, the, the world is divided into nine regions, each of them headed by a trade commissioner. <clears throat> Our trade commissioner is Simon Penny, and he's based here in Dubai. Uh, I won't actually go through everything I've written on the slide because that everybody can read that. What I just wanted to quickly talk about is, is DIT in general in terms of what we do. So we promote British products and services across the world and ensure firms take advantage of opportunities open to them. We assist local firms to invest in the UK as well. We bring together policy, trade promotion, financial expertise to break down barriers to trade and help businesses succeed. The UAE is the most developed country in the Arab Gulf. Its economy is only second uh, to, the, to Saudi Arabia with a GDP of approximately 405 billion US dollars in 2019. The value of UK exports to the UAE was 12 billion in 2019, an increase of 13.5% over 2018. There are approximately 100 of us uh, DIT personnel in, in the 12 countries that make up the MIAP region. So there's lots of support available to British exporters in the region. Uh, approximately 100, 120,000 British expats call UAE their home. Uh, and receive about and we receive about a million visitors from the UAE every from the UK every year. Uh, the Emir the Emirati is fondly called London its eighth Emirate, and many pursue higher education and own homes and properties in the UK. Therefore, there's a natural affinity towards the UK. Um, I just want to quickly talk about <clears throat> uh, the British Centers for Business as well. Uh, that many of you all will come across or probably have already come across. So earlier, DIT <clears throat> delivered all services um, in-house, like market research, support for uh, for for um, for um, um, UK exporters in terms of in terms of doing event management, support during visits, competitor analysis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All of this is now done by the British Centers for Business, which is DIT's uh, delivery partner since 2013. Uh, they help businesses navigate the business terrain in the UAE. Uh, you can approach them to do things like event management, market research, uh, amongst other things. So all in all, they are they are an extension of, of, of DIT in the UAE, and they provide UK companies a bespoke service um, in the UAE. What DIT does, and I'm, I'm specifically talking the food and drink here, is we focus on building and maintaining relationships with regulators, government entities, distributors, um, trade associations in, in the food and drink sector in the UAE. Um, so, for example, you heard uh, Dr. Sam Hashmi earlier. So we know them very well. We know Dr. Sam very well. We have great relations with Dubai Municipality, and we work very closely with them. Uh, to ensure that um, food supplies, drink supplies from the UK uh, flow smoothly from the UK into the UAE. We work very closely with um, Scotland, so with SDI in West Northern Ireland and the Welsh government as well. Uh, we work on market access and trade barriers and organize large events such as Gulf Food uh, or, or Meet the Buyer events at Gulf Food, which again, probably some of you might have attended in the last couple of years. Um, Going to my next slide. 
So just want to quickly touch upon uh, generally the food and drink sector in the UAE. Um, so as you can see, those are the sort of headline figures about how big the UK global food exports is. 85% um, of UAE's food, food is imported. Um, in 2018, UK exported 361 million pounds worth of food and drink exports to the UAE. Um, Expo 2020, which has moved a year ahead and which will kick off in October 2021 now because the pandemic is expected to generate close to 425 million pounds worth of F&B sales. And um, we are we are well sort of, uh, you know, uh, the, the DIT in the UAE is doing everything that we can to ensure that, um, you know, uh, everybody is, um, UK companies can, can have access to all, all the opportunities that will come with, with, with these uh, at, at Expo. So we are doing everything that we possibly can in ensuring that um, UK companies can access opportunities at <clears throat> Expo. Uh, we also, I just want to also quickly talk about um, things like, you know, we've got well-established British brands here as Tesco, m and Waitrose already here. Sainsbury's started selling the products since last month uh, and their plans to go into other markets in the region as well. Um, and a recent survey by, by Barclays Corporate Banking uh, found 62% of UAE consumers are the strongest association of quality with Britain, brand Britain. And, and food definitely tops that list with consumers willing to pay 22% more for food label made in Britain. And the UK is considered to be leading on new food trends like organic, vegan, free form and healthy alternatives, all of which are showing massive growth, not only in the UAE, but across the region and beyond. And people are becoming more health conscious and are more interested in the farm to fork journey. Um, in the, in twenty one of one 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 really good um, sort of um, figure I want to put in front of everybody is that in twenty seventeen the U the UK ranked thirty third in terms of quantity of food items imported into Dubai, Dubai and this was again figures given to us by Dubai municipality um, but when it came to the the number of items imported in the same year we took the top spot. Uh, this just shows a diverse range on on offer from the UK and the trust people place on on brand Britain. So, just to quick touch upon uh, sort of consumer sentiment and behavior post COVID. As you can see, again, you know, again, it's it's all on the on the slide. I'm not going to go through that. But certainly people's perceptions have, have changed. Uh, online retailers and e-commerce platforms are, are experiencing unprecedented growth as consumers are shopping, uh, are, are sort of, you know, um, avoiding shopping malls in response to COVID-19. Uh, just, just a few examples, a Dubai-based Majid al uh, which operates 24 shopping malls, including Mall of the Emirates, has seen a surge in uh, online sales since March 2020. Um, and this demand for online sales is, is continuing and is expected to be a regular feature in people's lives going forward. Gibson's an online um, a platform uh, selling a number of UK brands. Uh, so it's weekly order shoot up from 15,000 to 35,000 during the pandemic. They also took on additional workforce to, to meet the demand. Um, Mums World, a retailer, that uh, you know caters to to new moms and babies saw so demand um, shoot through the roof at about 800 percent when the pandemic first hit so you see a lot of a lot of um, online uh, kind of uh, demand people moving to um, sort of buying stuff online um just a quick uh, touch upon uh, the uk government's bounce back plan uh, in terms of in terms of um, uh, what what the UK is planning to do, uh, a lot all the details can be read at the, at the link there. Uh, so please feel free to go in there and, and have a look. But I just want to quickly tell you all that um, you know um, we have an Agri Food Councillor that has been appointed, who's currently actually based in the UK in the Defra office, but she. Uh, will be based in Dubai from, from Jan onwards, uh, hopefully. 
Uh, and one of the key roles that she'll be performing is to be looking at um, trade barriers and and how how um, you know uh, we can ensure that uh, food and drink products from the UK come into this market uh, without um, uh, too much problems. And uh, so we'll have a colleague from Defra based in 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 the in Dubai to try and resolve those problems going forward. Uh, also, a, a quick touch upon uh, some of the, the kind of support we provide um, to UK companies um, in, 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 in the market. Um, so and again, those are examples in terms of what we've done. We did this Middle East Dairy Week. We had 41 to 1 meetings. We've done an Agritech webinar. The British Lamb Promotion event that on, on which I'm working with AHDB, we were expecting to run a physical event in December, but we uh, we we are not going to be doing that now simply because the pandemic is kind of still still surging. So we've discussed uh, the possibility of probably pushing that back to March 2021. We are running a seafood webinar in November. Uh, we are also running a British brand promotion event with a, a local retailer uh, from end of November to the beginning of December. So there's lots of opportunities, and what we try and do uh, is to assist the UK suppliers in every which way uh, in terms of selling their products in, in the market. And, and how we do that is also making sure that um, we introduce you to other MIAC markets like the GCC countries, Iran, Iraq, Lebanon, Jordan, et cetera. Uh, introduction of brands via the Great British Food Box program. So what that means is um, you can, um, or we, we, we can actually send samples of your products in a food hamper to various distributors around the region or around the world and then you can actually sit down and have a one-to-one -one meeting with them. We've looked at new business opportunities with, with example, like with Emirates, with Etihad, uh, with the Abu Dhabi government procurement post COVID-19. So we're always looking at new opportunities and how we can link in UK suppliers onto those opportunities. Of course, then there are specialist retailers who are focusing on organic, free from healthy food categories. And, and we're, we're certainly working with them. And of course, online platforms. So we've, we've built relationships with Amazon, UAE, Noon.com, Truebill, and some of the very specialist online food, food platforms. We run um, intense one-to-one -one events during Gulf Food, which is the biggest uh, food event, annual food event in the world. Uh, in 2019, we had 300 plus one-to-one -one meetings between UK suppliers and local buyers. Earlier this year, we had 400 uh, plus meetings uh, and um, uh, we also have plans for 2021 and we will come to you with those plans shortly. Um, so basically, um, that is, is how we kind of help and assist um, UK suppliers in the market. I just, this is a very brief outline about the halal food sector. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not an expert on halal food, so to speak. So, and I had a short time to prepare this. So I've just picked up stuff from, from various sources just to give everybody an indication of how halal food is an important element, not just, not just in the Middle East, uh, certainly in the Middle East, because it's, 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 a, it's a Muslim region, or con countries made up of, of Muslim populations, but also across the world. But certainly, as you can see, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a massive growth area um, where, um, you know, the projections are massive. Dubai certainly is playing its part in ensuring that um, that you know it is the center of of of, of um, the Islamic world um, in in uh, in the region. As you can see, those are the plans uh, as far as Dubai is concerned, and 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 they are very very serious about it. Um, also, the fact that Dubai is a massive re-export hub, so approximately 30 to 35 percent of all products that come into the UAE are re-exported. So you can imagine that uh, that you know when you sell products into this market, your products could be going to other GCC countries, Far East, the Indian subcontinent, and and therefore you, you're not only just limiting yourself selling into the UAE. Uh, also, the global Muslim spend on FNB is expected to be approximately 1.3 billion currently in, in dollars, and it's it's growing. So certainly that is an important element. And um, the other the other important factor is that the UAE and Israel have normalized ties recently, opening doors for the rise in demand for kosher food. 
um, as well. Abu Dhabi started a kosher food certification program for its hotels, which is likely to spread to other parts of the UA as well. So with business ties normalized, travel restrictions lifted, um, and, and tourism expected to grow, uh, the demand for kosher food in the UAE and in, in, in and into Israel, why the UAE is now a reality. So please keep that in mind as well. Um, I know Aval has touched upon um, this in his previous um, presentation. Uh, so I won't spend too much time on this, but what I just wanted to let everybody know is um, we worked very closely with the AHD, AHDB for the last one and a half odd years. We are we work quite regularly. In fact, approximately a year ago, AHDB came into the UAE to look at the market, and DIT and AHDB together met approximately 25 uh, buyers in the market to understand uh, the demand for uh, British lamb. Uh, and again, um, we invited the suppliers, the, the, the buyers, to meet um, UK suppliers who exhibited on on the on on the. UK stand at Gulf Food in Feb 2020. Those meetings went off very well. Unfortunately, the, the pandemic sort of put a, a spanner in the works, but I'm sure there will be other opportunities going forward for uh, the buyers and the suppliers to sort of be talking to each other. But as I said earlier, we're looking at actually organizing a, a visit of a trade mission of UK suppliers into the market. And we, for the moment, push that plan back to probably March 2021. But our uh, or HDB and DIT talk regularly in, in, in understanding where we are, what we ought to be doing, and we regularly connect um, buyers to suppliers and also let HDB know about it. And also the fact that now um, the HDB has a, has a an agent in the form of BCB that again is is an important element to make sure that um, um, you know the um, UK suppliers will benefit from that. Trends and challenges again. It's all up there um, in in, Sorry, in the sort of in slide, um, but I kind of just you know wanted to quickly mention that. Hello. Hello? Sorry, my slides disappeared. What happened? Your slide disappeared. I don't know what's happened to my slide. Hibsa. Yeah, yeah. I I saw. What happened to your slide? Hold on. Apologies for this. Let me just uh, run through this again. My slide seems to have disappeared. Yes. Uh, I wasn't sure what happened. Apologies. I will upload again on this. Right. Let me help you. And um, Adil, you have um, three minutes left, yeah? You were at this slide. If... Then, yep. Yep. Okay, it's three yeah, minutes Yeah, we were left. here. Yeah. So yeah. we're just talking about trends and challenges. Um, so again, certainly there's there's been a big shift in purchasing habits and relying on online distributors has influenced the growth of UAE red meat market. Uh, the key challenges in the sector are kind of facilitating the particularly fast delivery of perishable goods um, and in that case solving the last, last mile problem and reducing the cost of flexible same day delivery. Um, so that certainly is, is still a cause for concern, especially um, perishable items like red meat. And uh, but some of the larger e-commerce markets or market players are certainly looking at that very, very seriously. Uh, also, people of the UAE are highly conscious of the freshness and, and purity of red meat. Um, so that, again, is an, is an important element of, of, uh, of the market. And the mentality of buyers in the region, when I talk about buyers here, I mean the industrial buyers or the buyers who actually buy and supply to food services and retail outlets, is that if the shelf life is high, it is of, of, it's commercially viable. Um, the UK provides between 30 to 40, 40 days of shelf life, which is less than half of what is offered by Australia, which is kind of above, uh, sort of, I think it's between about, um, born in is about 70 days and, and born out is about 90 days. So um, that again is, is something that uh, UK suppliers certainly have to look at. They also provide 
um, assistance through promotions, classes, visits through their trade association called MLA, Meat Livestock, uh, Meat and Livestock Australia. Um, so that again is something that we need to keep in mind. Um, again, uh, in terms of opportunities, uh, basically you're talking about as you can see again, there's lots of opportunities for the UK lamb in the UAE. Uh, as I said earlier, we have now a DEFRA funded agri food counselor appointed to work on market access barriers. Uh, AGDB is appointed an agent in place here that can assist AGDB members. Of course, DIT is always there to help and assist. But again, competitive prices, uh, certainly for uh, premium quality lamb would be of, of great assistance, not the commodity version shelf life needs to be looked at and of course marketing support where possible so those are those are concerns uh, or, or that that you'll have to look at suppliers will have to look at uh, when they be looking at the uae or, or the region again Yama, this is um, uh, a quick touch upon yeah. um uk oh, lamb exports to dubai again uh, this was and thank you to dubai municipality who provided this information uh as you can see, 2019 looks pretty high, but I think the surge in demand in 2019 can be attributed to the depressed supply from Australia uh, due to the drought and uh, and the demand from China. Um, so, and also some efforts we put into the UAE. Post the pandemic, uh, with all the additional support now available to UK suppliers, we expect the demand for UK uh, lamb to increase manifold. Uh, the advantage we have is that we have a small base and excellent product uh Jamma, and 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 a lot sorry. of market share Adil? that we can take from competition adil can you hear me adil um uae regulations i'm, I'm going to quickly touch upon this because i have very less time left but certainly uh food supplies to the uk must be aware of the embrace quality mark um regulation uh that is for juices and dairy products and for water uh also um there's a 50% excise duty on sugar sweetened beverages from the 1st of Jan that's been put in place and updated nutritional labeling regulation from 1st of August. Um, you know, that requires exporters to declare additional information on, on, on their labels. So all of these are things that uh, will in some shape or form affect exports from the UK into the UAE. We are working regularly with the authorities here, including Dubai municipality. As I said, they've been extremely helpful every time with authorities like ESMA to try and see how we can um, assist uh, UK suppliers with, with all these um, regulations. And we are having those discussions with the UAE authorities in November through ministerial meetings and through joint economic committee meetings so we are taking these matters up with them. And just a quick one here, the final uh, slide really, in terms of when you're looking at selecting a distributor, setting their KPIs, some of the, the key issues that you need to keep in mind uh, when you are looking to work with the distributor, whether that is on retail, food services, modern trade, whatever. You know, in terms of talking to them about their, their launch plan, commitment to your brand, um, their finances, um, and, 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 and other key things. I'm sure everybody will be looking at that, but I just thought I'd put all of that in place for people to sort of mull over. So really that was a very, very quick whistle stop tour. And I'm sorry about the IT issues, uh, but I'll be hanging around for taking questions uh, later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.